So, friends, we're down at my dad's, and, of course, we had this blow down here, and you can see why, a root rot, right? Yeah. Hey, Gange. How's she going? Good to see you. Good to see you again. We got a, a couple funky ones, to be honest with you. This guy here, well, you can see what we targets we've got. we got boats, and because of the root rot, you, you got to be careful. They're unreliable. Yeah, they are unreliable. That's exactly a good way to put it. They're unreliable. But these should be solid, but they might not be. I got a feeling the rest of them are. That might have root rot, but that's okay. It's leaning back into Look the that bush. There that little, oh, this one's leaning back hard, actually. Oh, yeah. So and we got, yeah. Check We're going to have to. Out. I'm going to have to. Where, oh, look at that. Yeah. See, that's an old one, that yeah. one. And there's another one over there. See, look at all the root rot in here, son. All those are old root rot blowdowns. So it's in here big time. And we got this one here. Yeah, look at this one. For, oh, this one. Yeah, and it's got all kinds of dog legs and weird goofy stuff in it. But no, there's a goofy fella right there. Pops, how's it going? <laughs> and then uh, hydro lines. And then we got this little guy here, which dad wants out too. It's, it's kind of, you can see, it's just roots on rock. Roots on rock, and it's not bad though, that one. Fairly straight Pretty up, straight. but I think I can use it, Man, son. It's gonna be nice firewood. It is gonna be nice firewood, but I might be able to use it for this, sonny. But, so the worst tree on the on the gig here is this one, to be honest, is that little guy right there. Leaner. Oh, she's <laughs> leaning back hard. Yeah, it is. Right hard. It's now- There's no room to get wedges and stuff in these little trees. Well, that's it, and it's got root rot, son. You know it does, look at it, it's all swollen. So what does a guy do? He thinks he throws a rope in it is what he does. Or, because I don't know if that tree's going to sweep it out, son. I think it will. You think so? That bigger one behind it? Well, what's it got to grab? There's no limbs. Yeah. I bet it'll take it out. There's a big limb outside there. Well, it's a dead limb, so probably not. I, I don't know. I, but all I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cut it up, ram a wedge in it. I might even back cut it first. That'll give me a... a well, yeah, I have to fall it right into it, but I didn't want it into it. I wanted it to the left a bit up here. So anyway, we'll get started. We'll, we'll knock one, buck one, whatever. So here's the deal, friends. When you're cutting trees down, Sonny, can you do a bit of filming for me? I want to tell these folks about high side and low side and targets. That camera, you might want to move back. Friends, oh, you're good. this tree... I want, even if you don't know how to cut a tree up from like you're comfortable, everybody's comfortable walking up to a tree and, and cutting it from this side of the tree, right? Most people are because you're, you're, a lot of you guys run half wrap. You got a full scope on me, Sonny, in the camera? Yeah. You run half wrap. But what happens when I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to follow this tree from here. I'm not going to do it because targets are right behind me. If I snip my corner, the freaking thing's going over top of my shoulder. If I do, which I'm not going to but it happens, friends. So, targets are over there. I want to fall this tree from this side of the tree because my, my worst targets are there. I hope that makes sense. Now we're going to run this saw. I swapped the bar out, friends, because what it was is me and Bear Clout, people were asking if we threw gasket sealer on. We did. It just did. I just didn't show it, friends. That's all. I was flipping all around. I had the excavator going in the yard. Not, yeah. There's gasket, there's gasket sealer in there. Anyway, so here we go. Here's the gig. It's a little funky. We don't know what's in the stump yet. Could be root rot and our targots. So I'll put you guys here and you can 
Check it out from this angle here. I'll make a stump. And here it goes here. That saw's gonna need some tuning. Yeah. Sure uh, sounds different now. Hey? Sure sounds different now. It does, and it's hungry. Yeah. These pants are a little foo bar. <laughs> <laughs> Homemade chops. Yeah. <laughs> Make some sausages. <laughs> you guys are having too much fun. Yeah. Okay, let's see how this cylinder works. Be dead center. To get it doing its thing. Yeah, and you spin it over, you can tell if it's yes. not spinning nice and yep. it's off a bit. Yep. So, friends, I just want to show you how we made out. Friends, take a listen. This is a, a, an Iron Horse day. We're all about Iron Horse today. His saws are ripping. Um, see the little oak right there? That little oak tree and that little arbutus? Those were what we were saving out from way back there. And there's the stump to the left. You can't hear me, but what, I wanted to explain that to you. There's the little stump. Right on the money. But but watch this little power saw of, of Hogan's go. His violin's coming along. I'm probably yelling at you. That saw is still idling. That's a good sign. Probably just breaking in. The rings, eh? Let's see how it cuts. It's a little hungry right now, friends. I will be honest. <laughs>
bit on a new set of rings and all that it'll till you find that spot where it'll idle okay that that was well it went right where we needed it to go so that's good now this guy is next it's leaning back quite hard it's small but uh, i think we can get her actually not bad um so not bad for a meat cutter what's the process i'm gonna ask you young fella we're gonna, what's the process of cutting a tree down? There's steps. Son, what, what's the process? Can you fill our viewers in on, on what the, the process is step by step when you go up to cut a tree? And you look at it, you assess your lean, you assess where it needs to go, what you what you can and where you can and can't fall it. Okay, assess lean, and then good. assess your lean and judge whether it's leaning back too far or if you can fall it without a rope or if you can wedge it over with the given lean. Perfect, so you know, assess your assess lean. Assess how tall it is. Absolutely. Sure gonna hit something out in the distance okay next clear out your little area yeah yeah find your exit uh, yeah. and uh what about uh hazard assessment look for hazards that's the next one on the list yeah there's also that too but he, he's got it right you assess lean and then assess the tree uh did you say that about yeah, yeah you said assess the tree itself so yeah, that kind of goes with the whole assessing the lean and everything it does that? It's at the top, and if it's if there's loose stuff up there, or yeah. If the tree, you think it might be dead or not? Exactly. Yeah. Look for signs of rot. Okay. Or if anything could be. So what do you see here? Like like in in the stump? Like well, it's got a swell on the butt, which usually firs don't have, and it's kind of the rest of the trees here have root rot. The one right beside it's got really bad root rot. So, so we we got root rot. Odds are it does have root rot. That yeah. one even had that one had a little bit of rot around the outside it did there that one had it just starting in the middle so okay odds are it's got root rot okay potential it it does so in saying that and you can see it's leaning out there it is the bushes, and it's leaning back towards our road yes it is hydro line. so hydro lines are another hazard yeah so there's two sets of hydro lines the, the hot ones out in the road yeah, and the service right. lines right here okay so hogan has established the lean which is quite actually it's leaning it's back limb type of anything 
It's not limb tight. Good call. That's another one, son. That's exactly what you do. You assess the freaking tree. I think if you put your cut in right about there, you'd be out of the rot and you could... Okay, so that's, a, that's another good suggestion. He said, put your cut in up higher because root rot can disappear within two to three feet. And this ain't a freaking log in sight, so you don't need to worry about low stumps or nothing. Just cut it where it's comfortable for you. That's right. And cut it where you think you might be out of the- Exactly. You'd be into some better wood. Okay, what about sequence of cuts here? What, I mean, think about this First a minute. cut, you line it up, you sight in. No, oh, here, on this particular stump. Well, I don't know what your plan is. You're not gonna let me cut this one, so you'd have to do that. I yeah. heard you mentioned back cut first. So that's what I would you do. Know, you do that, set your wedges. Yeah, because there's no room for wedges. Jack it up a bit on the wedges. Yeah. So you're not fighting it as you already got your undercut in. The tree sits back more. Yeah. And you got your bar in there and you can, you get a back cut in it, start a wedge, pull it out, get the wedge right set. Yeah. And then you put your undercut in. So do you think that a guy with this lean could even get a wedge in it if he put his undercut in first, son? Do you honestly think... Maybe if you put a really small undercut in. You, you're right. It would you have... You get a wedge. You, you do it, but it's a lot of fumbling around, and it's difficult, especially when you're newer. I'm not the greatest at wedging smaller trees. Yeah. You always wedge into your bar, and then you're stuck, and then you got to tap your wedge out, and exactly. it sits back, and then you're pinched, and then... Good point. You know, it can be... A, it can, you can get pretty bamboozled in smaller trees. You think it's just a small tree, but it's trickier than a big tree, because in a big tree that's this big, you can, you can have your cut all the way into where you can't hit your, That's your bar before you even start a wedge. Good You're stuff. cut in far enough to where you can. Good stuff, son. That is exactly it, buddy. You, you, you nailed it. You can't, friends, honestly, and we've been through this on the channel, but I like to talk to guys about this that are into and growing and being better tree guys. And the sap's running through my veins. Oh, yeah. Tree guys aren't just climbers and, and arborists in this. If you're going to be a... a, a need to understand... Yeah. Wood, fiber, fiber and, and wood and leans and physics. And this here, sure, we could throw a rope in. Any Learning tree guy can throw a rope in the freaking Learning thing. Learning how to wedge saves you messing around, setting ropes and, and I, stuff like that. You know? Son, I know tree guys time. that don't know what wedges are. They don't eat. I'm serious. It's rope or nothing. I mean, I'm exaggerating. Well, but that's, that is the safer way to do it, especially if you're unsure about it. That's the safest way to do it. I'm not knocking anybody that's No, of course not. That, that's not what we're if doing. If you learn, a, learn wedging save yourself a bit of time and mess it around here here's here's the deal on this and you answered all the questions correctly sonny you assess your lean cut your path get just your your hazards which are howard uh, hydro lines all that stuff we got root rot i'd say assessing your hazards goes into assessing your lean because while you're sitting there staring at the lean yes. the tree, you're going to notice whether there's hung up limbs or a yeah bit of a goofy top or if there's you know you're gonna see mushrooms or but do you know a lot of guys that just walk up and start cutting some <laughs> just walk up and start cutting and i'm guilty for it I've but here we go here's the lean friends i mean it it is honestly intense it's leaning it's not a massive tree friends but it's leaning right back into there big time it's not a massive tree but it's also too big for us to push it over it's not something where you could push it over if you get no. a pinch like it's it's still sizable that's a heavy tree <sighs> yeah there's a so hundred ways to skin this cat, but wedgemanship is something that is, is, is just not, I don't see it being practiced a lot. Uh, fallers are the, are, are like, look at this thing, friends. It, it's weird looking. <laughs> look at it. Comes right back in here. Bone heavy back here. So, and here's another thing. This thing's got an oblong type of growth to it. So I'm going to put you guys over here and I'm just going to show you my process of, of what I do because it is foobar and Hogan's right. It, it is, um, I personally would never, well, if my only option was to throw an undercut in that, it would not be a deep one. It would not be a deep one. Ganges power saw. This thing feels better with that rubber in it, boy. Oh, way better. Oh. Uh. You ever run into this problem, friends? There it goes. Just patience, give it a couple taps, pull out a wedge. They always come wrong. It's not fuel. Okay, it doesn't. Cut first. 
In bigger trees, you can set the wedge before you pull your power saw out. Friends, quick, quick, quick interjection. The only time, the only time ever I've tagged a house and it was the corner of the, of the, of the whatever, the eave just was doing this right here on the Haslam's property right down the road years ago, but I did it. And I, uh, you, you see where I, I'm meeting up my cuts right now? This is imperative. Don't take for granted that it's just whap, 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 because it is not. I nipped one fiber too much one time, putting in my front cut. After my back cut was in, wedge was set, and I put my undercut in and I heard a little pop and I went, no, yes over my shoulder it went. If I nip that corner right there, if I take too much fibers and it, it breaks off, it's taking the hydro lines out. Your name becomes mud. This is an incredible technique to use. It's, it's a faller's technique. It's not really a tree guy's technique. So, but it can be incorporated in the right areas, but you can mess it up bad. I messed them up when I first was, was learning them. Out in the bush, didn't matter, right? Pop up, shucks. Stump jump, right? Where you go. Back to the show, friends. bottom out so let's get another one double up this is the thing so just start that nice and slow you want to come this side son so they can see what you're doing better from this side. okay friends so hoagie's got a double up there i'll show you what's going on upstairs See that tree pound? It was leaning hard. You could, uh, Just get that there. yeah, okay. Yeah, that's gonna take it. You see what he's doing there? Look at that. Ton of lift right there. Beautiful job. It's gone. It's hard starting those wedges with the two different size wedges. Yes, it is. You always end up going in between them. So friends, see here? So so here's our wood. Beautiful. We do have root rot in this tree. I'll show you down lower. We may not. It looked like yeah, we did. the stump off, I bet So that do. first wedge, pull that first wedge out again, son. The first wedge was sunk right like that. And he was going to bottom out. So get in there. You can't just put this in, though, because same deal. You're going to bottom out. So we needed that double wedge, left. So you'll definitely bottom out that's right so that's why we doubled up instantly and nurse them in slowly so they don't kick out on you okay friends we're gonna buck this up i just kind of learned that if you start hammering on your wedges you'll you don't get lift and you'll fling your wedges back at your face easy tap like i say wedgemanship is something that's way overlooked you know friends yeah you know through my years of drifting <laughs> it's good to see us again i know it's been a while the Manleys, I think, was the last time I'd seen you on my Salt Spring Island drift. Oh, gosh, that was a good time. Friends, I can't stress enough how important the back cut technique is first. But I'll tell you, I remember like Bucken was saying there, you snip one too many fibers and it's over your shoulder <laughs> and the party's over. There's no question about it. And you'll catch yourself drifting on down the road, 
beating yourself up over the head with a wedge, thinking, ah, I should have done better than that. Take your time, friends. Drift on, but drift clean. Um, son, do you want to try that? Yeah, sure. There's there's some hidden jewels in this grass here, boy. Huh? There's some hidden jewels in here. You don't got to grind, do you? Yeah, no, no, but just telling you. I was in camp many years ago and the bull bucker said to me, your partner's saw is dull. Friends, he was through the valley, like thousands of feet away. He says, your, your partner's saw is dull. You can hear what a saw is cutting like and you can know, I can anyways, know what a chain's cutting like or what his, what his chain looks like by the sound of the power saw. It may sound crazy to you, but that's just how it is now.
It's such a beautiful song. He, he was singing it up there pretty good. Here's our last stump. It's, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut the video off there because there's actually another tree or two, but friends, it, it's sometimes when I'm making these videos, I want to show you something and that takes time to, to, to chatter about, you know what I'm saying? To discuss, excuse me. And, uh, I, I, I don't want this channel to just be rock and roll music and undercut back cutting trees flying down and you just go, wow, that was cool. I, I don't, I'm not into that. I've told, I've actually said that for many, many years. A long time I told you that, didn't I? So, yeah. So that, friends, wedgemanship is, is if you're a tree guy, uh, find out about wedgemanship. When I was falling, when I was first starting out with Danny McGiffin, he sent me down. I remember the day. I remember the day it was on Haslam's again, right down here. We've done lots of logging in this area. He
He sent me down there and he said, Buckin, go down and get that cedar. Friends, it was a four foot cedar. It was leaning out over a creek. Well, not like this, but it was, it was leaning hard over the creek. I had four wedges. I took the extra one. You know what he said to me? He's dead now. We went to his funeral, remember, a couple of years ago? Danny McGiffin, just a beautiful man. Skitter Dan, loved him. Anyways, I went down and I'm like, oh man. If it was a fur, it wouldn't have happened, or a balsam, it wouldn't have happened. Cedar lifts easy. But still, it was gnarly. I was down there for, oh, half an hour, 40 minutes. I got it up the hill. He said to me, though, go down there and, and practice your wedgemanship. That's what he said to me. That's the words he said to me. Learn wedges, friends. Learn them. Any opportunity you get, resi anywhere. Learn about wedges. Uh, there's a lot more than just popping a wedge in and start beating it over. A lot more. Friends, that's it for this. There's, I'm telling you something, Iron Horse, me and Bear Claw, when we toss that other freak, and I'm going to look over here, you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I put that um, other cylinder on, it's a completely different saw. It's harder to start. There's more compression. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It rips. So uh, there's another tree here. I'll, yeah, we'll do some more on this video. But listen, be kind to one another, friends. It's it, This year's been an inter interesting year. But we're going to roll through it. We're going to drift on. And we're going to do what we want to do in our own lives, in our own time. And we're going to be kind on the way. And help people out find their place too. Include your friends in the sandbox with you. Excuse me. Include everybody in. Catch you on the next one, friends. Over and out.